say to you, Echo Out Blog is reporting live at Landmark Center, Victoria Island, Lagos State, on the occasion of Lagos Trauma Conference 2024. Team, Advancing Trauma and Emergency Healthcare Systems for a Tribe in Lagos. Leading experts, policymakers, and healthcare professionals are here today to discuss strategies towards advancing the city's healthcare facility and effective response to trauma cases. Therefore, Echo Out Blog will bring to you live coverage of this event as it unfolds. I am Taiwo Idowu, reporting for Echo Out Blog. The Lagos Trauma Conference 2024, held at the Landmark Event Center, Victoria Island, aimed to revolutionize trauma and emergency healthcare in Lagos State. The conference themed Advancing Trauma and Emergency Healthcare System for a Tribe in Lagos. The first of its kind brought together a diverse group of stakeholders, including government officials, healthcare professionals, and community leaders, to address the critical challenges facing the emergency care unit. Notable attendees included Governor Babajide Sonwolu, the First Lady Dr. Joke Sonwolu, the Deputy Governor Dr. Olufemi Amzat, and the Minister of State for Health and Social Welfare, Dr. Tunji Alausa, Honorable Wale Raji, and many others. The event began with a documentary showcasing the history of trauma and emergency care in Lagos, highlighting its growth from a small unit to its current state. Speakers from various medical fields addressed the pressing challenges facing the emergency care unit and presented innovative solutions. Dr. Olusha Gumboye, a renowned pre-hospital emergency care specialist, emphasized the need for government support, such as purchasing a helicopter for faster patient transportation. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Lagos State pre-hospital emergency care. Uh, the Lassenbos case study, past, present, and future. Okay, so basically we'll start with what is a medical emergency? And it's a, it refers to a sudden, serious, and usually unexpected situation that happens. And the point is that it requires immediate medical intervention, absolutely immediate, in the shortest possible time. It could be trauma, such as a, a gunshot injury, a car accident. It could be an acute medical condition, a heart attack. It could be an obstetric emergency, a woman who's about to rupture or has just ruptured. Uh, and it could be a mental health crisis. So the goal of pre-hospital care, as you can see here, is to stab stabilize the patient and swiftly get the patient to the nearest possible hospital. It's not enough to just put a patient in an ambulance and sit and fold hands and then start to pray and fellowship that the patient will get there on time to be saved. The point is to have people starting the intervention right there in the ambulance. Just a little historical perspective. Uh, Lassenbos was established in 2001 by His Excellency who is now the president of, of Nigeria. Uh, there he is in the picture when it was established. It was designed to provide pre-hospital services and to create the synergy that was needed for continuity of care for emergencies. It started with just 21 personnel and then only four POJO uh, station wagons. This is the current coverage, but I will go to this one to discuss it. We have base one which has uh, 11 ambulance points and covers a population of over 12 million people. We have base two, which has 10 ambulance points and covers a population of about uh, 5 million, I think. And then there's base three, which has two ambulance points and covers a population of about 915,000 people. Then we have base four, which covers uh, which has three ambulance points and covers a population of uh, 505,000. Base one is Lasuth, base two is GH Lagos, is in GH Lagos, base three is in Ikorodu, and base four is in uh, Badagri. 
Dr. Emanuela, Permanent Secretary of the Lagos State Health Management Agency, discussed the critical importance of sustainable funding for emergency services and health insurance. A panel discussion followed, featuring experts from diverse fields. Dr. Pamela Ajayi, President of the Healthcare Federation of Nigeria, advocated for a stronger cross-sector collaboration to enhance emergency health care. Dr. Samuel Keshiro, Assistant Commissioner of Police and First Pathologist and Head of Clinical Service at Police Hospital, Falomo Ikoyi, highlighted the crucial role of law enforcement in responding to medical emergencies. Dr. Babayemi Oshinaiki, Pediatrician and Head of Accidents and Emergency at Lagos Teaching Hospital, emphasized the need for evidence-based research to guide trauma care practices and improve patient outcomes. Dr. Abiola Idowu, Executive Secretary of the Health Facility Management and Accreditation Agency, advocated for improved regulations and standards for ambulance services to ensure timely and efficient transportation of patients. Dr. Bolaji Oke, Director of Rehabilitation at the Lagos Ministry of Youth and Social Development, discussed the importance of inclusive care for all individuals, including the most vulnerable members of the society. The First Lady, Dr. Ajoke Sawolu, delivered a powerful speech emphasizing the need for accessible trauma care centers throughout the state and the importance of prompt emergency response for all citizens regarding of their socioeconomic status. She highlighted the devastating impact of trauma on individuals and families and called for a comprehensive approach to address the issues, including prevention, early intervention, and quality care. The Minister of State for Health and Social Welfare, Dr. Tunji Alausa, reaffirmed the federal government's commitment to supporting legal state efforts to improve emergency health care. He praised the state's progress in the area and emphasized the importance of collaboration between the federal and state government to ensure the delivery of high-quality health care services to all citizens. I would like to express my profound gratitude to His Excellency President Bola Metinumbu for his unwavering commitment to improving health care, health care across Nigeria and for his continued love and dedication to Lagos State. His support for this project is a reflection of his deep understanding of the healthcare needs of our people and his resolve to continue to address the needs of our people. To His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babaji Sawolu, I extend my profound appreciation for your foresight, your dedication to the welfare of people of Lagos State. Please let's give His Excellency another round of applause. Governor Babajide Sanwolu, in his keynote address, expressed his unwavering support for the conference and outlined his administration's ambitious plans to transform the emergency healthcare system in Lagos. He announced the government's commitment to increasing the number of ambulance buses, investing in state-of-the-art equipment and expanding access to specialized trauma care centers. The governor also emphasized the importance of community engagement and public awareness in promoting trauma prevention and early intervention. Thank you, and thank you very much. And so I'm deeply honored today that I'm wearing two caps, you know, and I will talk about the two events very shortly. That we have gathered here today first to witness the first Lagos Trauma and Emergency Healthcare Conference, you know, the very first of its type um, that we're having, and also to witness a very important event, a partnership that will outlive all of us, a partnership that is extremely very enduring, um, an understanding of agreement between the Lagos State Government and the Federal Ministry of Health on the transfer of LTY Equate General Hospital um, now to be known as uh, Federal Medical Center, EPE. Um, I want to thank each of you for participating and for being part of these very invaluable contributions 
that we see towards the shaping of the future of healthcare in Lagos. We've all had a very robust conversation and discussion today, especially with the team of the conference, which was enhancing trauma care and emergency healthcare systems for a thriving Lagos. And that is a strong operative word for a thriving Lagos. Lagos has to thrive. Lagos has to indeed work for all of us. And it's in that context that we need to look at all of the verticals that make a living city, a thriving city, worth its while. And you know too well that in our economic agenda, the second pillar there that drives us is health and environment. And so when you see a bustling mega city of our start, you know, it comes with a lot of complexity. It comes with a lot of demand. It comes with a lot of resilience. But in all of it, we cannot forget or take to chance our healthcare system, particularly in the area of emergency care. And that's why I believe that this conference, which talked about trauma care, certainly must be something that must be germane and be critical, and which we believe will ensure that we can effectively manage both the day-to-day -day emergencies, you know, and also large-scale um, emergencies that are, can come. Madam First Lady has talked about preparedness, you know, and ability for us to triage and all those kind of terminologies and the rest of it. It's all part of the resilience of a city. Nobody ever expects in an emergency, but you need to have the level of preparedness. You need to have the capacity and the ability to respond when all of these things happen. And so here today, we've seen a lot of commitments, both on the public side and on the private side. We've seen that we've done addresses that immediately addresses the needs of trauma care patients, which will indeed lay the foundation for all Lagosians to know that their government will continue to work for them. As you might be aware, trauma is one of the leading causes that we see around of death and disability also in Lagos, because the time to respond is always a major thing. In several illnesses you know, or, or critical condition, you usually have a three, four, five hour window to do a lot. And once you miss it, the consequences are always, always very severe. We've seen across, you know, road accidents, we've seen very fatal, you know, um, um, falls, we've seen violence, we've seen medical emergencies. You've seen a lot of things, you know, um, happening around us. And it is a level of our preparedness, you know, that will reduce the fatality or the calamity that will be coming out from some of these very, very sad occurrences. Whilst as a government we have made some significant strides in our healthcare delivery, there's still a lot, considerable level of improvement that we require. And I would believe that trauma care services is one area that we certainly can do a lot more. And I'm sure, I mean, um, conferences like this and discussions that is coming out of here can only deepen our ability and our capacity to be able to respond, address all of the shortfalls, and be able to better position our CC, you know, so that we can indeed um, not just lip service our level of resilience, but it can really happen. And one of the key pillars that we see as a strategy in emergency healthcare is our investment, investment in healthcare infrastructure. We dare say that in the last five years, and with all sense of humility, we have built more facility, we have invested a lot more than we've done in the last 10 years prior to our government. And it was very intentional. Year on year, we've seen between a, a gradual growth of from 7% to as high as 11 or 10.5% of our budgetary expense on our healthcare facility, on our healthcare infrastructure development. We've seen us being very audacious improving the number of the senior members of our health practitioners, you know, sitting in senior positions that no other government, even at national and subnational, has been able to do. We are the only ones that have looked at our entire value chain of our health and we said, indeed, we can have six to seven permanent secretaries that are all health professionals, you know, taking care of one health vertical, you know, or the other. And we're building, you know, we're building more hospitals we're building facilities and infrastructure at the size and at the magnitude that we've never seen before. Our Massey Children Hospital, 
our trauma, um, our, our, um, our general hospital in Ojo that we're doing, the state of the heart um, um, health facility that we're building in Kichu Reunion, which is also close to Ekwe, are facilities that will merge or will compare favorably with any other facility in any part of the world. And we're happy that we're making those investments you know, accordingly. The Lagos Trauma Conference 2024 was a resounding success, bringing together leading experts and stakeholders to address the pressing challenges facing emergency healthcare in Lagos. The conference provided a valuable platform for knowledge sharing, collaboration and advocacy, paving the way for a brighter future for trauma care in the state. Now, this has been a phenomenal conference. It's the first of its kind, uh, this the trauma conference. And it's actually um, amazing the caliber of people that have been here and the commitments we've had from all of them. What this trauma conference has highlighted is the fact that, you know, that there needs to be better emergency care and trauma care in Lagos State. And Lagos State is determined to do something about it. There have been a lot spoken about in terms of leveraging technology and finding sustainable funding for improving emergency care and trauma in Lagos State. And the commitments from the Lagos State Governor himself, Mr. Governor himself, in terms of increasing the capitation fees for um, across board for health insurance in the state, as well as providing uh, the... the uh, understanding the importance and going out of his way to ensure there's going to be legislation, the Good Samaritan's law, to protect the first responder, to ensure that people who help other people do not have any liability, do not have any problems, but are able to perform CPR, are able to help others without any worries. And I think that's such a huge step because bystander CPR is something. When people have a cardiac arrest, that's when they have a heart attack and they drop down. They need somebody to actually perform CPR, which is keep their heart going until an ambulance comes. And if they don't have that, they will die. So this law will help a lot more people to be able to do that without fear. Okay, so uh, for the first time in the state and perhaps the whole of Nigeria, uh, stakeholders are sitting down together to discuss how to move uh, trauma emergency care generally forward in Nigeria and in, and in Lagos State. Uh, there are a lot of things that happen that are taken for granted. Uh, what we are doing is that we are bringing standards, we are bringing protocols, we are bringing policies to the delivery of emergency care. Uh, we want to look at things that happen on the street every day. How can we make survivability of injuries better? How can we make survivability of other medical emergencies better? Uh, for example, uh, we know that of those that die from road traffic crashes, 50% of, of them will die within minutes. As much as 80% will die within minutes and hours. Is there a way we can begin to you know, mitigate that loss of lives and beyond the loss of lives, the injuries that incapacitate people render, render them economically not viable? So those are the things that we want to start looking at how to get it better. Was there no Lassambos has been around for a while? Emergency care service has been delivered in the state for a while. We want to bring a standard that ensures that everybody gets the care they require uh, when they require it. And that's what this has, is primarily about to improve on what is existing and to begin to formally chart a course to make health emergency care delivery get better in Lagos State. Well, basically, everything we're talking about today is how Lagosians will get access to good quality, urgent emergency care if anything happens to them. Either it's a car accident, it's a heart attack, it's a fall from height, uh, it's a mass casualty event. If anything onto what happens that requires medical attention, that they will get it quickly and they will get the best quality of care. And that the care will start even right in the ambulance, not until they get to hospital. It won't be until they get to hospital before they get good care. So what has happened is that Lagos, as small as it is, a lot of people come in. 
So our population is just expanding and so there's pressure on the health system. And one of the things, most important thing that everybody should know is that when there's an accident, where there's trauma, where there's an emergency, the first 24 to 48 hours is the most important where you can save that person's life. Somebody can bleed to death within hours after an accident. Somebody can have a broken neck and they couldn't get to the hospital. So our emergency trauma ambulance service is very, very important that we have one that is that is of value, of quality, and we can sustain it. And that's what we've been doing in Lagos. We've been sustaining it. And this conference is just to bring about like minds, policy makers to come together because there's some areas that we need to improve on. For example, our referral area, when patients go to the uh, hospital and they've seen the, the, the doctor, have they seen the doctor where they've been stabilized before they're transferred or are they being sent away? So it's very, very important, not only just to have many ambulances, but have ambulances that are equipped with the correct um, equipment that you need. And not only that, that the human capacity, the people, the skilled workers are well skilled to be able to provide basic life support advanced life support and all the things that we need for immediate um, um, care that will not lead to death like I said within 24 24 hours 48 hours before transferring the patient to the hospital so that's what we're trying to do because um, we have to cover the whole of Lagos and that's what mr. governor wants to do that nobody is left behind it doesn't matter whether you're in the river areas where we have the um, water ambulances it doesn't matter where you are as long as you're in this Lagos something unfortunate happens to you in an emergency you'll be able to get immediate first aid treatment which is what we're calling emergency care Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, yeah. Um, so, when it comes to this interview, sir, can you kindly introduce yourself, sir? Well, my name is Wale Raji, member representing the peripheral constituency in the House of Reps. Okay, sir. Um, this particular program that has been organized, the Trauma Conference, how can you say it's going to benefit the people of Lagos? Well, uh, the Trauma Conference, from what I learned, is the first of such conference and uh, it has really is it has really exposed a lot of us to new information about trauma you know and how to i mean things to do you know when you find yourself in situation and also information about services that are available you know in Lagos state and the nation in general you know in, with respect to trauma uh, treatment uh, management you know so it's really uh, a, a conference that is beneficial to the people of the state. And uh, I want to commend the organizers for a web package conference. As we conclude this special event today, you would agree with me that trauma and emergency care of Lagos State is in capable hands. Thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page at Echo Out Blog and follow us on all our social media platforms. I am Taiwo Idowu reporting for Echo Out Blog. <laughs> <laughs>